2018, 3.30, Yes, indeed, the last Freakers show of the month. So, uh, glad you're all here joining us live on RealLibertyMedia.com on this awesome evening. And uh, we're going to have a good time here. We're going to play some music. We're going to talk about some stuff. We're just going to have fun uh, getting into whatever it is we decide to get into. And uh, welcome and howdy to all you folk out there. Uh, listening on the various airwaves wherever you may be. Uh, always, always good to have you with us here on the Friday night for the festivities commonly known as the Freakers Ball. And uh, we do broadcast in a wide array of places such as freedomsnetwork.com. Yes, indeed, I'll talk about those people in a few minutes in a little while. we got some things to talk about over there. Anyway, so <laughs> Freedom's Network, and then RealLibertyMedia.com, of course, RLMRadio.xyz for the audio stream. But if you want the, the video, the the real show page, it is on RealLibertyMedia.com under Channel 1 there, or just uh, hover over the show pages there and select Freaker's Ball, and you'll come right on in. You'll find it. You'll be with us here tonight on RealLibertyMedia.com. That's right. And and you'll be with all the great people here in the chat if you jump into the chat, which uh, hopefully you would do, because we got a great group of folks here, and they always have a good conversation going on, talking about various this is and that. Uh, I don't know what you like better, uh, this or that, but but we got them both. We got all of that, this and the that. So uh, <laughs> we, we got people like Cowboy Tech and the Barman and myself and the Mighty Moose Girl who will be on the line here in just a second. Uh, Miss Kate and as Mo and Beth Z and Chloe and Free Slaves and Gramsy doing a great show. Uh, she always does a great show, but uh, yeah, just a little earlier uh, this morning, this evening. Morning? I guess it's morning for some of you, depending on where you live. Uh, anyway, we got Dom C and the Java Doctor and JJ's and Y Taco, Mr. Meister Brow, Rain and the Fluke Bot and Trust No One and the Woodman. Hey, he was Meister Brow a second ago. Anyway, we got Benoit, we got Dakota, we got Dima, we got Frumpy and goes Gooberzilla, the Kozu, Meister Brow again with three Meister Brows. Dang boy, you're you're replicating here. And <laughs> MM Bot and Mo E Nenson Dumbois. Uh Poxified po Poxa Home. Poxify Home. Poxa Home Fied. Uh and uh, Pone Sauce or Sock Puppet, depending on how you want to look at him. And of course the Phantom. Yeah, Mr. Wu's replicator is is is, is hitting overdrive. <laughs> we got names for folk. Woodman is Mr. Wu. By the way, for those of you that may not be aware, um, I know I know I, I I know Moose Girl is uh, on the, the the communicator device because I saw her log in. My my little my communicator device says that her communicator device said she was logged in, so hopefully uh, she's logged in. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, so this is, uh, like I said, the last Freakers Ball of, of March, of the first quarter of 2018 here on Real Liberty Media. But uh, also on Sunday, is um, it's, it's the 1st of April, April 1st. April Fool's Day. I don't have any tricks to play on you today that I'm aware of. I may come up with some, but this, but at this point in time, I have no April Fools to play upon you. <laughs> hey, Moose Girl. <laughs> hey. How are you doing? I'm doing. Well, that's how's good. it going? Oh, that's right. It's, it's a full moon. For you lunatics, uh, it's going fine. It's going fine. Good, Just, uh, you know, getting all the high howdy do's out of the way. You know how that goes. I heard all the howdy do's. <laughs> I was listening. Okay, good. Um, so anyway, let me start yeah. off uh, before we get into anything here. And, and and let me let me see how many people we got. Maybe I'll wait on this. 
Oh, no, we're, we're good. I think we're good. Um, I, I wanted to mention, okay, this Freedoms Network, uh, social network that we have, uh, that we're yeah. a part of here. Now, I, I, I presently don't know exactly. Uh, okay, let me, let me start at the beginning. About a week ago, I think it was last Saturday, actually, uh, got up in the morning, turned the computer on, uh, or the browser on there, and Freedoms Network said, oh, no good. There's, there's, there's these guys didn't pay your pay your uh, server fees, so we're we're to shutting you off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I messaged the the Bo Diddy. He's he's the uh, actual. Uh, well, anyway, he he handles the money parts on that side. I only handle handle the tech parts. Anyway, so mm-hmm. yeah. um, so I mean I messaged him, and, and then uh, later on that night, I heard of, I heard back from him that he didn't have no money either. Uh, and, and, and so, uh, I went ahead on the next morning, Sunday morning, and, and I, and I mm-hmm. paid for a month, a month's worth, which, uh, is, okay. is, is at a much higher rate than if you pay by the year. Either way, um, oh. <laughs> either way. So it's good for a month right now, a month from last Saturday, uh, from Sunday. Um, at which point in time, uh, if donations have not rolled in, and I, and I don't know. I, I messaged Bo to, to tell me how much keep me updated on the donations. But I haven't heard anything back yet, so we'll we'll find out um, if if we're getting donations or not. Uh, I it's it's I can't tell. But if at the end of the month, or the end of a month from last su- Sunday, uh, the donations yeah. aren't there to pay for the server fees, uh, we'll shut the site down. That, that's all there is to that. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, we're <laughs> I, I don't yeah. mind. I don't mind doing all the tech stuff and, and building it and, and, and updating it and keeping everything running. I'm great with that. But I, I got no money to shell out to, to help you guys over there on the freedomsnetwork.com. So if any of the, the people that are over there, you listen to this some point in time during the next week or so, um, bear that in mind because uh, um, I. I, I, I Free, it, it's not that much. Consider we we got we got enough people over there. If they if they want to support that site, they'll support the site. And if they don't, there's plenty of other social networks out there that'll do the trick just fine. Um, I, I I never really had a desire ever to run a social network. <laughs> just, just keep that in mind too. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mind doing it as long as the people that are using it are are, are willing to, uh, to to fund it. Uh, and it's not that much, you know, considering how many people we got over there. We got a, we got a good 250, 300 people over there. Uh, so we're only talking, you know, for the most uh, you know active users, they may want to shell out a few more than than the less active users that probably won't shell out anything. I, I don't know. Either way, I don't I don't know how the donations are going. If if those donations do come in. Uh, then we'll keep it going, and if not, uh, just be prepared for that, uh, Freedoms Network folk. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to know you and glad to know you, and if you decide, uh, it, we'll all let you know in a week or two uh, how that's gone, because it give you time to, to find a new new place to go if you need one. So, anyway, that's all. That's enough about that. Just just uh, I wanted to get that out, out of the way. <laughs> cool. I mean, I, I don't know if it's cool or not. Well, I hate it. That. What it is? I, I I I hate the whole money money end of things. You know, it's just uh, that, that's there's no fun in that. No. And uh, so uh, you know, whatever I do, what I do. <laughs> and and how much you get to pay for one month? Thirty bucks. Oh, okay. Uh, but you need how much for the year? So then, how much is it for the year? Three hundred and sixty dollars. Okay. Right. So. Um, so that's your goal is three sixty. That's the, that's the goal, and like I said, all right. As, as, as soon as I get, you know, Bo gets back with me, I'll be able to update people on how much, where we're at, and and how where we're going with that. But uh, you know, it's, right. been, it's been a great fun. You know, it started off as the world truth thing, and then that 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 became an issue, and uh, so we switched over to this one here, the Freedoms Network, and. And it's been fun running it, uh, you know. Um, but uh, hey, I'm not doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I do like um, I, I like Minds.com. That's a great, great, great uh, yeah. site there. So uh, whatever. Seems pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's a new one out there, and I mean, I know it's like this. This is all these social networking sites are gonna pop up out of the woodwork now because of the shit with Facebook. But so, and I haven't, I haven't signed up on this. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, but it's called Me We. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I saw something about that. Yeah. And um. It's another social networking, supposedly, no ads, no tracking, no BS, that's what their site says, or that's what, you know, front home page says, or whatever, but, you yeah. know, really, I don't know. Uh, if right. it's on the yeah. internet, it's not private, all right? Right, and then, the, the thing is, you know, it's it's getting the people you know to go to, to a certain place, Uh because that's right. really, that's really yeah. what it's about, right? I mean, you want you want to, you want the people you know to go to a certain place. Yes. Um, yes. So you can all communicate with each other. Right. That, that, that's 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 where it comes down, and um, that, that's the only purpose of of having these social networking sites is so you can you know interact with your friends and stuff. Right. Yeah. So that's great. <laughs> I mean, I could be way more political on Facebook, but I'm not purposely because I just can't stand the, the bullshit that com comes along with that. Yeah. Um. So I just post stupid things on there. Nothing that really matters or means anything. Um. You know, I'll post song videos on there or something or. You know, something good that happens, you know, or, you know, when Marty died, I put that on there. But, you know, it's like, I don't use it as a political thing. Right. You keep, Just you keep because them. I have too many relatives on there. Yeah. And it's very difficult to try and convince people to get off of there. Yes. Even Even with all this crap going on, they don't care. No, they don't care. They, you know, most people are like, well, if I'm not doing anything wrong, yeah, no, that's then how, that's I'm how okay, they get it's you. okay. That's how they get you. <laughs> yep. And it's like, you know, it's a slippery slope there. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a grease pig. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking about leaving Facebook. Yeah. But then it's like it bums me out a little bit because I'm like, well, how, how am I going to keep track of, you know, or keep in touch with the friends that, like, don't live in this area, that live out of state or live, you know what I mean? Right. And that's not my main way of communicating with people, but it's just good because everyone's there, you know? Yeah. Well, once I was on Facebook for a short while back a few years ago, several years ago. <laughs> anyway, um... And and so I had, you know, then the thing with, you know, like my brother and my sister and some other people that I know. Um, but I wasn't there very long, and and, and uh, I decided, no, I don't, I don't like this place, and I'm getting off here. But I, so I messaged or notified everybody on there that, hey, I'm getting off here. And um, uh -huh. I, that might have been when, uh, when uh, World Truth started. I, I forget, but it was right around. Yeah, that. It was I think right, that's right. It was right around that time. Anyway, I told everybody I'm getting off of here. I'm going over here. If you want to, you know, to get in contact with me, I'm here. Nobody, not a single person did. So fuck them. Right. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> it comes down to, uh, you know, people know how to, people that I know know how to get in touch with me without doing it on the. Uh, on a website like that, but uh, right, other, right. other than that, you know, you can get your people out of your past to track, you know, one of the people that tracked me down over there on the Facebook was somebody I never wanted to track me down again, it was a girlfriend that I, that I had in junior high that was a psycho. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> she started messaging me on there, it was like, oh, this, is, this is not good. <laughs> 
Oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so that's yeah. why I purposely am not, like, political on there and stuff. You know, and I, when I first started being on Facebook, like, you know, I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to post whatever I want. I'm not going to worry about it, blah, blah, blah. Then I started having, like, backlash and, like, arguments and debates and people, like, it's just like, really, people? Come on now. Right. Yeah, you know, sometimes people try and engage me like that on Twitter. And I, I just don't yeah. do it. I, 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 you want to say, oh, whatever you said is really stupid. Okay, fine. I'm not, I'm not coming, coming back at you. I, I put what I put there, and that, that's the end of it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not answering. Right. I'm not, I'm not going to get the little tit for tat uh, on the Twitter with you. <laughs> that's not what it's designed for. Right. Uh, I mean, and I'm purposely not friends with anybody at work. Well, that's good. That's a good. That's a good thing. Yeah, because I know what would happen if I friend one person from my work on Facebook. All these other people are gonna want to friend me <laughs> from my work. There you go, because Ben. Because the one person at work is gonna have all the other people at work on their friends list, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, now I gotta agree with so Ben. Like, I, no, I, I gotta agree with Ben Wall on this one here. I like to tell, to tell people to fuck off in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a pretty good tactic, though. I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely get the point across, yeah. Mother. Oh, man. Right. Yep. Anyway, let's kick it off with some tunes here. And uh, we got we okay. got plenty of, plenty of things to talk about tonight. Besides these goofy social networking thingies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. All right, we're gonna start off with a cowboy tech request here. Where's my, All right. where's my deal? Well, there it is. I, I had I had to make some new cameras for Vinny's show. I don't know if you know or not, but Vincent Easley the second is doing a show every Friday now at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, and uh, that's cool. And I'm hosting it as of yet, so far. So. Uh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, he he calls because he's only got his cell phone. He doesn't have like a good internet. Oh God! <laughs> so so I, I broadcast it on the RLM radio and live. Oh on okay. U- and I do it live on YouTube too. Oh okay. Yeah. Anyway, this is the Mighty Zap. All right. <laughs> a weird little end there. Uh, that's a Kate request. Miss Kate request there. Barry McGuire with Eve of Destruction. Uh, one of my favorite songs of all time, really. Uh, it, it just says so much there. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome song. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Megadeth doing an acoustic version there of Symphony of Destruction. And we kicked it off with a cowboy tech request. Led Zeppelin and the Immigrant Song. So, uh, good tunes, one and all. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yay. Huh? We said yay. So, how, how you, you watched the rest of that show last night, I assume? What show? Your boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, I watched it. Yep, I did. <laughs> yeah, I watched the first it one. Was pretty darn good. Oh, I watched the first three or four tracks there. It was pretty good, but none of the songs that I knew. Um, well, well, they have new songs. They always, they put out new albums quite often, so. They played some of the newer ones. You weren't there then, but. They played the one really old one that I hadn't heard in a super long time. I'm like, I was freaking okay, out. Okay, let, let me say it this way. None of the songs that we played here on Freakers. <laughs> right, there you Which go. is the only way that I would know them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh. So, yeah. No, Fort Near Sandstone. A band I've been watching for 15 years. 
Pert in the air from Minnesota. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good band. Good they band. were playing in Madison last night. That's Turn that. your stats on. That's, that's some tight bluegrass, let me tell you. Yep. I like those guys. I love them, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And, and they're, they're good. I, I can't help it. I understand. They're good. They're good band, so. Yeah, they are. I love a lot of bands, though. It's like, I can't, like, pick one. <laughs> oh, I, that I'm would a, be too hard. I'm, 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 I'm having a tough time figuring where <laughs> thinking, What are you what doing? The, I'm trying to pick a pick a story to start with here, and, and I'm having a tough time picking the picking one that I that I really want to go with. Um, <laughs> let's go with this because I know you love Disney. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. This story here. We'll start here at G. Edward Griffin's site, the Need to Know dot News site. Um, yeah. <laughs> Planned Parenthood calls for Disney princess who's had an abortion. What? Yeah. Uh, no. And and my my first question when I saw the headline was, now how 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 are they going to work a girl having an abortion into a kids film? I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> All right, well, here it is. Uh, Planned Parenthood, <laughs> just, that just doesn't make sense. Anyway, Planned Parenthood in Pennsylvania tweeted that Disney Company should expose children to extreme left-leaning themes, including Disney princess that has had an abortion, a princess who is pro-choice, which uh, I'm okay with that, uh, a, a princess who is an illegal alien, which I think they've had several of those already, uh, a princess who is a union worker, well, it's a princess, she's not going to be working for anybody, and or a princess who is transgender, which I, I would not be surprised they've already had that too. Uh, the tweet was deleted shortly after posting. <laughs> Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood argued in support of the new Disney characters Tuesday, including the prince who's had the abortion. Uh, in, in a statement on a Twitter, Planned Parenthood Keystone account called for the animation company to expose children to numerous left-leaning themes. Uh, and, uh, all those uh, Disney princesses trans. Now, I, I, they've had some ugly princesses, so it could be one of those. Um, Anyway, so uh, <laughs> apparently the tweet, which received only 40 retweets, was deleted shortly after as both supporters and opponents of the organization voiced their concerns. Uh, somebody says, Disney princesses are for children. These are adult issues. Uh, this, right. this, far, this far out crap is why we got stuck with Donald Trump. Which I, I don't I don't get the connection there, but okay. <laughs> Another pro-choice Twitter user agreed, describing Planned Parenthood's tweet as extreme. Uh, others uh, like likewise pushed. It can't be real. It's not going to fly. Well, no, it's not. They're dizzy and planning on doing it. Planned Parenthood. No, it's not going to. I want yeah. want, wants them they're, to do it, whack. or at least this, this particular. Um, Chapter of Planned Parenthood uh, want, wants them to do it. Well, they're not going to. <laughs> and of course, it's That's like a, uh, I think it's, it's a Florida, a Florida group. Um, it's just insane. <laughs> Some uh, must have been I don't know a Trump fan I don't know who says we need a Disney princess who uses her royal authority to defund you stupid assholes. <laughs> No kidding. <laughs> and somebody says, wow. so somebody says, a trans princess who is an illegal immigrant union worker who has had an abortion. Kids will love it. <laughs> Another joke. <laughs> uh, anyway, this this is the the kind of the insanity. This, yeah, that, that's, that's part of this crazy. world today. Um, but like I said, you know, I I would not, you know, there, there's definitely been. Um, not about illegal, but uh, foreign princesses. Oh yes, right. Definitely. 
yep. they could be illegal aliens. Uh, we don't know. Um, and some of them, I, I mean, they they appear to be kind of manly. They could be they could be trans. We don't know that either. Um, <laughs> As far as I know, they did all portray a female, but you never know. Uh, well, they're cartoons, so, you know, we don't right. know. Um, it's, just, it's just a bizarre world that we're living in. And, 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 Very. And, and on the, the bizarre world we're living in stuff here. Mm-hmm. Teenage girls shower alleged killer Nicholas Cruz... With fan mail. Are you kidding? I am oh, not, wow. I am not kidding. The the man who allegedly shot and killed 17 people at his former high school last month is apparently admired by some individuals who one expert said may be facing their own mental health challenges. You think? <laughs> uh, the South Florida Sentinel... Sun Sentinel called the correspondences to Nicholas Cruz fan mail and love letters and noted that some of them include donations of a commissary amount that allows qualified inmates to purchase uh, of some goods available inside the prison, such as snacks or cosmetics. Is he wearing cosmetics? No, know. the fuck soap and stuff is considered a cosmetic. All right, so it says teenage girls, women, and even older men are writing to the Parkland school shooter and sending photographs, photographs, some suggestive, tucked inside cute greeting cards and attached to notebook paper, with others offering friendship and encouragement. Groupies are also joining Facebook communities to talk about how to help the killer. <laughs> I wish I could make shit up like this, man. Anyway, the South Florida Sun Sentinel obtained copies of some of the letters showing that Cruz, who had a few friends in the outside world, is now being showered with attention. <laughs> Lovely. Now, whether or not this guy was actually had anything to do with any of the killings, which I seriously doubt, um, this is still bizarre. Yeah, it this is. This is still bizarre. But, but again, as far as I understand... Um, the uh, a, a lot of the you know mass killers or serial killer type people get these kind of things you know uh, people yeah, want, they do. people want to marry him in prison and I think Charles Manson got married in prison didn't he I don't think he ever got married um, it does oh talk he to, had maybe he had a girlfriend it, it does talk I thought to, he wanted to or he was they were going to I don't know something like that it, I it, it does talk some about this it says. As the Sentinel notes, this would not be the first time that people have been attracted to evil men, including Charles Manson, the <laughs> cult leader and murderer, which is incorrect, too, because he was a cult leader, but um, not really a cult, but uh, and murderer. He never actually killed anybody. And then no, he didn't. And then Lyle and Eric Menendez, who were convicted of killing their parents, said those two were evil little fucks. Um, oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> Even serial rapist and murderer Ted Bundy had correspondences for people on the outside uh, where he was eventually executed in 1989. Well, one of the letters the Sentinel obtained was from a woman in Texas who sent it just six days after the February 14th attack, and she said that uh, she had the right to care about Cruz. Now, uh, like I said, regardless of whether he had anything to do or not, the, the dude's nuts. The, 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 the dude's obviously he's not he's not put together right. There's something no, he's wrong not. with him. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> Maybe That's he, why he was an easy target. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To be a patsy. Definitely. Yeah, and and it goes into more detail about what some of these girls wrote to him there in the, in the article. If you guys want to read it for yourself, uh, it's on Breitbart.com. Um, uh, to me, it's like I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. how, how desperate are these women, or, or, or how nuts are these women? Uh, you don't want to know that 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 want to go for something like that. You know, it, you it, do it, not want to know. I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. No, you don't. Trust me. <laughs> 
Oh man. So uh so do you have anything uh for this weekend you got to go to your parents or something like that? No. No. They don't, they, they don't do like an Easter dinner or No. Nope. No. Nope. Any any of that kind of No, my mom's down in Florida. I mean Oh, okay. Okay. So Yeah, no, I don't do anything. <laughs> All right. Just wondering. It's Easter. It's a religious holiday. Yeah, I know, but sometimes... I mean, I'm going to make a ham on Sunday, probably. See? See? The boys. There you go. That's 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 the so, traditional type thing. Yeah, I do eat ham a lot. I make ham a lot. I like ham. Ham's really good. It is good. The boys like it. I like it. So, like, I make hams all through the year. It doesn't have to be a special occasion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. so, yep. And ham's easy to make. I mean, you put it in the oven. That's what you have to do with ham. Oh, 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 uh, Free and Slave brings up yams. Now, the other day, I, I was kind of looking for different ways to, to make yams, and I came across this particular, mm -hmm. one particular recipe there on the interwebs. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever cut a, a, a raw yam in half? Yeah, they're hard as hell. Whew, my knives won't even hardly cut through them. Yeah, they're hard as hell. I, I, I was like, I need some new knives. These things are... It was, it was incredible. I finally did get get the thing sawed kind of in half. Um, if I was you, more... you need to boil them a little, or peel them. You can peel them, and you can boil them, and then they're easy to, easier to cut, obviously. Well, anyway, for this recipe, you had to cut it in half, because then, oh, right. oh, okay. then you okay. use the, gotcha. uh, the the skins as kind of like bowls, you know. Oh, okay, yep, yep. <laughs> I should have broke out the chainsaw, except I'd have wind up cutting my hand off or something. Yeah, no pretty interesting. <laughs> need but, one of them electric knives. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Or just, you work. know, a, a Ginzu or something sharp, you know, yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> they still make those? <laughs> I don't think so. They might. I don't know. Uh, I remember those commercials. I haven't seen a commercial for one for a long time, so I don't know. Info, yeah, infomercial knife. There you go. Yeah, it was an infomercial knife. It was yeah. before infomercials, actually. Even. It was just one of those made-for-TV commercials. <laughs> Something. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, anyway, I, I was just wondering, man. I, I was like, I never... I always just bake them, and then, then, then you could just crack them open. They're, they're easy. But, right, yeah. Yeah, but I, I was... Well, this one was... And it was... I mean, it came out pretty good. Um, there, there was nothing special to it. But, you uh, baked it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, then yeah. you bake it in, you know, like four, 40 minutes or something. Right, right. Which is, which is less than the normal time. It takes like an hour, hour and a half to, to bake the whole one like that. But, right, uh, yeah. Yeah. So so it was pretty cool to do it that way, but uh, <laughs> I was just surprised. I never, like I said, I never tried to cut one of those. So that, that was, that was, that was. More difficult. Yeah, they're than hard I as hell. Anticipated. <laughs> yeah, way harder than a regular potato. They're they're so good raw. though. They're so good. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah, you know, it's 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 not like a potato at all, actually. No, no, they call it sweet potato, but it's not like a potato. It's more like a squash. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I think it's more of a, along the lines of a squash, but. Well, if you're thinking, you're thinking of having chicken for uh, any weekend meal. <laughs> yeah. Don't. You don't want you don't want this chicken. <laughs> okay. What is it? What happened? From the daily from the Daily Mail. Oh, great! Daily Mail. Headless true warrior chicken is adopted by monks after surviving for more than a week since being decapitated. Ooh, weird. <laughs> chicken with his head cut off. You've heard about you know, oh running, around, running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Well, apparently this chicken just kept on living. And, it, and it says the chicken has now managed to survive more than a week after losing his head. Uh, the chicken at, in Muang Rechaburi in Thailand has been adopted by monks. Despite having no head, the animal is still alive and is being hailed as a warrior. The kindly monks from the temple uh, in, in near are to, to where the chicken was first found. Now, apparently, they can still feed it. 
uh, and I, it's it's a difficult thing to look at or to watch, but they have a video, and I'm not going to show it to you. Um, okay, anyway, yeah. the headless chicken that found internet fame for surviving more than a week after being decapitated has now been adopted by those bunks earlier this week. The headless chicken made headlines around the world as it survived the beheading and was uh, looked after by a kindly vet. Now I, I gotta wonder who the the, the person that uh, decapitated that weren't weren't they like hungry? <laughs> the remarkable bird uh, right. in the district of Ratchaburi Province in Central Thailand. Um, it says here, and, and this thing's gonna start playing, isn't it? Just stop. All right. Um, the, so they put this video up. The video has been viewed four hundred thousand times. Uh, according to the media reports in Thailand, the kind-hearted monks from the temple near where the chicken was first photographed in Thailand, social media user, some name I can't pronounce, shared the chicken story and later added, I can't, this is a vet with some weird name I can't pronounce, uh, costs have been paid by donations from well-wishers. Um, the vet named the Subodabadab, <laughs> whatever, uh, some some weird name, uh, was the first one reported to have cared for the chicken, feeding it by dropping food down its neck and giving it antibiotics. <laughs> she, she, she said, uh, I'm not joking, Ben. <laughs> <She thinks, laughs> this thing's bizarre. She, she said at the time, the animal has life. It wants to live. We feed it. Um, very, oh my God! Very occasionally, chickens survive being beheaded because of an unusual quirk of their anatomy. The bird's brains are in their skull at an angle, so the rear portion that controls automatic functions such as breathing can be left intact if the chicken is beheaded too Ooh, high. It's, it's it's awful. You know what they should do? They should kill it and put it out of its misery because it can't. There's no way to live. It has no eyes. They have to put. It, it, ew. Yeah, it, ew. Somebody it's should just it's eat gross. it. Just just have dinner, man. Right. Just eat it. I mean, come on. Put it's it out a, of its misery. It's a, it's a dang it, chicken. It's not a miracle. It, it's, not, it's not a miracle. All right? It's, it's not a miracle. That's all I'm saying. It, it's not. So anyway, here's, here's your article. You can look at the video if you want there of the headless chicken. Um in the in the people feeding it, the chicken has risen. Yes, it 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 survived. It's a it's a zombie chicken <laughs> at this point. And they got they have several. Yes, it is. They have several pictures of the headless chicken there for you to view. I don't want to see it. I didn't see it on Daily Mail yet, and I don't think I want to. No, no, you really don't need to. No, I don't. <laughs> All right, let's play some more music here. Oh God. <laughs> Alrighty, let's do that. Uh, this is a uh, uh, where's my where's my camera? Right here. Can always find the camera. Yes, this is Samantha Fish here coming up for you. She's from, gonna be at Revival Festival. And, and, and you're going to that, right? I'm going. All right, and where's yep. that at? Where's that at? Minnesota. All right. Well, this is from the King Biscuit Blues Festival. From, awesome. Uh, from 2012. The song is called Runaway. Nice. Thank you. Nothing like a live rock and roll show on a moving bus. That is the cellmates with Hey Ho, Rock and Roll. Yeah, yes, indeed. Before that, Rockabilly, man, you gotta love Rockabilly, don't you? Anyway, just before that, we had The Doors doing it. Who do you love? Uh, and that is their song, by the way. In case you were wondering, yeah, that is their song. <laughs> we checked it off there. Samantha Fish uh, with Runaway from uh, the King Biscuit Blues Festival back in 2012. Uh, doesn't say where that's at, though. So, uh, anyway, good stuff. And Moose Girl's going to see her coming up sometime. I am, in May. In May, next month. Well, Next not quite. month, not, baby. She not, just got added on recent, this week or something. Awesome. Um, to so the it, festival, it, so yeah. So it's a blues show? 
No, it's just all kinds of music. Rock, funk, blues. Oh, all right. Everything in between. Excellent. Yep. All right. I, I, That's I, me, I, CT. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think you went to see Oh, yeah. The most important one, though. Yeah. Well, one of them. I mean, they're all awesome that are there. Mm -hmm. But the headliner, Phil Lesh. Oh, okay. The Terrapin Family Band. All right, all right. So, I mean, hello. <laughs> Phil Lesh, of course, in case you don't know, is the Grateful Dead bass player. Yeah, I know, I know who he is. So, um, and he tours with a band, Phil Lesh, the Terrapin Family Band. Terrapin Family? Um, so, yep. Um, Leftover Salmon, Twiddle, Keller Williams of the Teal, Midnight North, Amy Helm, The Big Woo, John Cleary Trio, Samantha Fish, Clouser, Modesky Bates, Kind Country, The Last Rebel, uh, Useful Jenkins, Corey Wong, who I do not know who that is, um, Space Monkey Mafia, who I've never heard of, <laughs> Kitchen Dwellers, which they are the fucking shit, okay, they are the shit. The Space Monkey Mafia. Does who have any records? Which one? Corey Wong? I don't know. Oh, Phil Esch? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Kind Country. They're from Minnesota. They're really good. The Last Rebel. They're from Minnesota. Um, uh, Cancer. <laughs> Dead Larry. White Iron Man. Frog Leg. The Brothers Almanac, a, mid, a Midwest tribute to the Almond Brothers, P Pat Leonard's band, Coral Creek, Pat Ferguson, Black River Review, The Human Element, Dream of the Wild, Grass-Fed Mule, Armchair Boogie, String Dingers, and Steve McCormick. String Dingers. Um, Phil Ash and Family Band are doing two sets, um, Saturday and Sunday night. Okay. So, yeah, it's a stellar lineup. Sounds there's awesome. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is no doubt. It's a stellar lineup, and they're having a special right now for, um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, Big Woo's there. Big Woo. What kind, of, what kind of crowd do you usually get there? Oh, it's a typical Harmony Park crowd. No, but I mean, 1,000, 10,000? 1,500. All right, cool. About yeah, it's they 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 don't like to max it out over that. They don't like to go over that amount. Um, it might be more though. It might be. I know at one point fifteen hundred was like the max, but it might be up a little bit more. It might be seventeen hundred because they did add on to like the camping area and stuff. Yeah. So that's it's not right in the park, but they they expanded. They made like part of the parking lot into more of a campground. You know, a, a field as opposed to just a parking lot. Right. So I think they can get a little bit more in there than 1500 But, yeah, 3000 would be the max for sure. That would be overboard, actually, um, for that park, that place, that venue, you know. Right. Um, so. Sounds great. It should be good. I mean, I know it's going to be good. Yeah, it is, <laughs> you know. Even. No uh, question that, you know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good time. Yeah, I, I just, usually if I don't, like, they want 50 bucks for that camping. Um, I'm planning on getting there on Friday night, late Friday night, but the, the thing doesn't actually start till Saturday. Mm -hmm. They're having, like, a Friday pre-party. Yeah. And so, I get, if I get there Friday, I'll be able to find a spot, like, inside the park. You know what I mean? Oh, that's nice, yeah. Yeah, or I could just can't, you know, stay in my vehicle in the field. It's in a freaking field, you know. I mean, the park part is not a field. The park's got like all these ancient oak trees and everything, and then where the parking lot is a field, you know. Oh, okay. That's outside of you can't you don't we don't drive our cars into the park part where the trees are and everything. Yeah. You have to park your car and walk your stuff in there. It's not far though. It's you know. Yeah, you have a good tent. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And so, like, it's not a long walk. Like, it's not like a huge, huge outdoor festival, like, at a huge venue. You know what I mean? It's pretty small. You know, like, 
that's 3,000 max. Blue Ox is like, I don't know, 20,000? Oh, that's, yeah, much bigger. Yeah, what? M much bigger. Yeah, way bigger. You know, I mean, so the scale, I mean, that's why it's so cool. I mean, it's awesome because you get really close up to the musicians. Like, you you know what I mean? Sure. Like, you're right there. I mean, you know, it, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> like, the stage is freaking huge, right? Yeah. And so you you know you get there's a big open area, you can you know you can be close up you can be back and I mean you can be like camping in the back part of the camp of the park and hear the music, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, you can bring your cooler up there, but you can't you don't bring it up there right where everyone's dancing and shit. It takes up space. And when I'm talking a cooler, I'm not talking like a huge fucking cooler. I'm talking like one of those little ones, you know? Six pack cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But they also sell beer there. See, the way it should be, and this is what pisses me off about Blue Ox, is that, and they were really lax last year, okay, as far as bringing your own beer into the music park, because they have the camping separate from the music park, right? And so you have to go through kind of like a checkpoint, right? Uh -huh. you got to show your wristband and everything to get to the music park. Okay. Well, they sell beer there, right? Yeah. And you have to buy a cup. What the best way to do it is to buy a cup for twenty dollars, and they fill it up for you. See, it's really fifteen, right? Wait, they what? They fill it up with beer for you. They give you the the, the metal cup for twenty bucks. <laughs> okay. Well, then every time you go to get a beer, you use that same cup, right? Right. And so that's, but it's five bucks a beer. That's expensive. Okay, what if you bring your own cup? Okay. Well, it's still going to be five bucks. Okay, but then you don't have you to can't pay. Bring, well, I don't know. I don't think you can bring. But, uh, but, but then you're not well, paying fifteen bucks for the stupid it's be cup. The right size. <laughs> they sell beer. This is beer they're selling. Ah, all right, all right. Tap beer. It's tap beer. It's not canned beer. It's tap beer, right? Yeah. And so, but for me, I mean, I could go down to the fucking bar at Courthouse and get a freaking, you know. 12 ounce tap beer for three dollars. You know? So, my point is, is that pissed me off the first year. You know, I, and I talked to the actual owner of Blue Ox Festival. I talked to the guy that runs the thing. Right? Okay. This is when they were still with Country Jam. Like, they, they've broken off now. Now they're on their own. Blue Ox is on their own. It's not part of Country Jam anymore. All right. But anyway, that's a long story. But anyway, I talked to this gym dude. I'm like, dude, I'm like, this is, I'm like, you guys sell beer. He's like, well, we have to, we have to do it that way. I'm like, you guys should let people bring beer up to the music party. He's like, well, we can't because we have to make money on our beer sales or we wouldn't make enough money for this, to, you know, for this festival to keep having this festival. Okay. Which I thought was a really lame answer. And I, I explained to him, I go, yeah, well, I've been to festivals where you don't have the, the separation between the music and the camping and they sell beer there and people still bring their own, but that bar makes it kill you. That bar makes a freaking killing. Sure. I mean, you know. Even if people bring their own beer, that bar is going to make a killing. You know, he, right. he's... I wasn't being rude to him or anything. I was just talking to him, but... And I don't even know if that stuck in, but I noticed last year they were a little bit more lax as far as checking people to see if they had cans of beer on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, seriously, dude? You know, I can't afford to pay $5 a glass of beer every fucking time. Sorry, that's bullshit. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, it is what it is, you know what I mean? Yeah, you go to these things, you know, you, 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 festival. you, you know you're going to spend some bucks out there, so. Yeah, I mean, you can go, you know, there's ways around things. I mean, I've, I, I know I'm pretty good at sticking fucking beers in, I mean, you know. Because <laughs> I oh. get pissed off, because I'm like, I am not paying $5 a glass for it. You know, eight ounce or ten ounce glass of beer. Right. Every fucking time. That'd be like going to a kegger and having to pay five bucks every time you fucking fill up your cup. It's like, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, and I talked, so I think that, and then even like the first year, I noticed that the later it got, the less they were checking people. You know what I mean? Sure, they'd like, already made their money. 
Right, they know they made money. They know you're fucking drunk. They know, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, they make a killing on that festival. Yeah. You know, and for him to say, oh, we need to, we need the beer sales in order to make a profit on this festival. Well, it was the first year. Granted, that was the very first year of it, right? Yeah. So they weren't sure if it was going to really be a, a regular thing yet, you know? Right, right. And so now they've been able to break away from Country Jam, which is good because now it's Blue Ox is on its own on its own now. It's its own thing, you know. Yeah. It's not affiliated with Country Jam, which is good because Country Jam, I fucking hate Country Jam. <laughs> Read Nick. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's more than two semis full. Yeah. It's Kegers that they the tap beer comes out of, and they also sell wine there too. Uh, all right. So anyway, um, this is uh, Easter weekend, so I have an Easter yes. Easter kind of story. All right. Not directly, but but kind of. All right. Christ appears in a Roman court to contest a 2,000-year-old riot charge. I told I knew it. He's a ghost. <laughs> He's a zombie. He's a fucking ghost. He's a zombie. Anyway, um... <laughs> A zombie would be visible to the naked eye. Well, here it is. Complaining that he had better things to do than to get up early to contest the totally bullshit claims Jesus Christ, light of the world and lamb of God, reportedly appeared in a Roman municipal court on Wednesday to face several 2,000-year-old riot charges. Like, I wasn't even in Jerusalem during the cleansing in the temple, so I have no clue why I'm being accused of all this stuff, said Christ who elected to represent himself in the proceedings during which he forcefully denied a series, a series of millennia-old allegations, including disturbing the peace by overturning tables of the moneymakers, incitement to riot by pouring out their coins, and flouting Roman open container laws by carrying a chalice of red wine in the streets of Galilee. I've been getting these harassing summon, summons letters for about three weeks, like... Thousands of years, but... <laughs> but oh my, no, this didn't happen. But can you expect me to this show up? This is the onion. This is the fucking onion. <laughs> or another parody site. I fucking know it. You're not getting me on this one. Unless the dude, there's people out there that are named Jesus. All right? <laughs> this is an onion story. I fucking know it. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, he says, I've been getting these harassing, harassing summons letters every three weeks for like thousands of years. But how could you yeah, expect me to show up when I haven't been anywhere near the earthly realm in forever? Well, now I'm here. And so maybe when the, when the <laughs> judge is done with this little power trip, he can show me the slightest bit of evidence that I ever broke one single law. This is such blatant fascism and not even funny. <laughs> oh, God. At press time, Christ had begrudgingly agreed to plead no, guilty. Now I know for sure onion story. They didn't use that <laughs> word back then. <laughs> no. <laughs> At press time, Christ had begrudgingly agreed to plead guilty to a single misdemeanor charge and pay a fine of 500 Roman denarii. <laughs> yes, it's the onion. <laughs> I knew it. See, I've gotten better now, Graham. Ever since you've gotten me a couple times on those fucking onion stories, you, I, I'm, my, I'm keen. I'm on to well, you. Well, I, I hope you pick up. Me. You pick up on one of Christ showing up in court. I, I would think. Right? So. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, 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 and then he took a plea. What kind of puss is he? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it. I knew that it was the onion. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I realized that. Oh, Especially God. when you said fascism. I'm like, oh, no, this is the onion. All right. So, well, you can tell me if this one here is onion or not. Okay. Sadly, it's not. 
<laughs> and, I, and I'd like to meet this guy because I, I'd like to, I, you know, I, I'm a non-violent guy, but I'd like to punch this guy right in the face. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just because. <laughs> oh, by the way, before we get out of this, today, it's Good Friday. Right? Yeah. Now, is is not Good Friday the day they killed Jesus? Am I wrong about that? And if it is, if I'm not wrong about that, if it is the day they killed Jesus, well, what's so freaking good about it? <laughs> Just something to ponder. Anyway, <laughs> back to my story here. Police help man dump girlfriend because he doesn't know how. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I'm telling you. To the man who lacked the cojones to break up with his girlfriend went to the police for help. For some reason, the officers decided to indulge the 34-year-old man rather than telling him to simply grow a pair and tell his other half face-to-face. -face. A female officer from Ludwig Schaffen in Germany apparently suggested several ways he could break up or break the news to his, to his girlfriend. She did not reveal what she had told him on the Tuesday, but did stress he'd ultimately have to do the deed himself. He apparently wanted to leave his partner because he did not understand her anymore. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, the police department added, We are willing to advise, but we cannot close the deal. <laughs> we help everyone, and we we always have an open ear for citizens' concerns. Uh, there's no word on how the breakup went, but hopefully he finally manned up and broke it to his girlfriend in person. Oh, my God. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I wish I were. Jesus Christ. You no said, pun intended. Uh, like I said, I'd like to punch that guy right in the face. <laughs> so, something wrong with a boy like that. Yeah, I, would I, I mean, so. I understand. It, it's difficult. It's difficult breaking up with a right. girl. Right, you, you know, it is. It's not the easiest thing to do, but you just sometimes you just you just do but, it, and it's uh, over, and you, it's done. You, you go to the police to help you dump your girlfriend. Uh, 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 you <laughs> oh God! Now and and and, and to me. Or most people here living in America, you would say, "Hey, wait, you going to the police? They'd probably shoot you for something like that." No shit. But no but shit. but it's not in America. It's in Germany. Oh okay. So uh, I, I they they aren't so trigger happy over there. They're they're not crazy. No no other country, well except for Israel. Um, yeah, maybe she, maybe he was like scared of her. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, she's bigger than you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she, he didn't want to get hit over the head with one of them fucking huge beer signs I got. You ever seen them? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, sure. Did you sure. ever watch any of that Oktoberfest stuff? When they have these, when you go over to Germany and you go to one of them beer pubs or whatever. Yeah. They make you do all these challenges and shit. Like, they have contests to see who can carry the most freaking ones of them. The, how many of them? Oh, I like that. The they're freaking heavy. Each the, one is like super heavy because they're like huge and they're they're thick glass. Yeah, they they, they some they'll have those at the Ren, Ren, Renaissance festivals. Right. Yeah, it's pretty fucking funny. It's pretty but cool. But pewter, uh, pewter ones, not the glass ones. Right, but still. Yeah. The glass ones are freaking big. What are those sixty-four ounces or something? I don't know. That's <laughs> like, a, like that's those, like a pitcher. That's like that's yeah, like a, it's like a pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, what, that's for one person? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. It would get warm before I could drink all that. That's why I want to drink it in smaller cups. Well, no, they kind of drink it. They, 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 tend, they tend to drink their beer at room temp anyway. Well, yeah. Someone, I was going to say, German beer can be, is, is better when it's at room temperature, actually. Yeah. Some beers are, even like Blue Moon. If it gets a little bit warm, it's not that. It doesn't, like, wreck it. You know what I mean? It doesn't wreck it. Um, right. I can still drink it. Like if you, if I, when I used to drink like Bud and stuff like that, or if I were to drink one, 
And if it gets warm, oh my god. No Great. fucking way. It's, it's a full moon. Arr! It is a full moon. Call it the moon, everybody. It makes, it'll make you feel better. <laughs> Even if you don't think you need to, just do it anyway. What the hell? Yeah, right? absolutely. What the hell? Might as um, well just, like, let your inner werewolf out and just... You know, it'll make you feel better even if you don't think you need it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, well, this I happened. Saw the night. This this happened. Uh, apparently, it happened a month ago, but we just heard about it this week for whatever reason. Okay. Nobody can explain this strange UFO encountered by two separate airliners in Arizona. I I, I remember that from last week. Yes. We didn't talk about it last week. It only came out this week. Oh, okay. Maybe I just saw it like Sunday night or something. Oh, okay. Anyway, newly but obtained. I, mean, I, I saw it recently. Though. New, newly obtained audio of a bizarre UFO incident that occurred in the skies above Arizona last month has been released online, providing first-hand evidence of a strange aerial encounter that nobody at the FAA, FAA has been able to explain. The incident, which took place on the afternoon of February 24th in the airspace over southern Arizona, began when the pilot of the Learjet 36 airliner, operated by Phoenix Air Group, contacted air traffic control after witnessing something he could not comprehend. <laughs> was anybody wow. was anybody above us that passed passed us like 30 seconds ago? The pilot asked, stammering a little, which you can hear in the recordings, which are embedded in here. Uh, orig originally obtained from the FAA by the Drive, uh, thedrive.com, excerpts of which excerpts not excerpts excerpts of which are posted below. Negative. The air traffic controller stationed at Albuquerque's air traffic center in New Mexico replies to the pilot. Okay, the pilot confirms, sounding unconvinced. Something did. Another pilot on the recording says a UFO. The, the first pilot <laughs> simply replies, Yeah. Uh, after a few minutes pass, the air traffic controller contacts another airliner in the vicinity of the Airbus A321, operated by American Airlines, to tell them to keep a lookout for anything that passes over them in the next 15 miles. If anything passes over, the pilot asked, sounding confused. The air traffic controller explained the situation regarding the previous unexplained sighting, and the Learjet oh pilot... God. The Learjet pilot clarifies things to the extent that he can, describing what he did and didn't see. I I don't know what it was. It wasn't an airplane, but it was the pass was going the opposite direction. Moments later, the Airbus pilot confirms that he too witnessed whatever the strange object is. Yeah, something just passed over us like a uh, I, I don't know what it was, but it was it was just like 2000 3000 feet above us. Yeah, it passed right over the top of us. The controller presses him as to whether the UFO was in motion or if it was just hovering. The Airbus pilot was not really sure. Since I couldn't make it out, it was if it, if it was a balloon or whatnot, but but it was really just really beaming light, and it had a big reflection and several thousand feet above us, uh, going in the opposite direction. When asked if it was a Google balloon, the Airbus simply said, "No, that's that's doubtful." These exchanges, uh, which are thought to have taken place over the span of just six minutes, are all that remain of the bizarre incident that does, uh, doesn't appear to have ever been formally written up by aviation authorities. Despite the seemingly invisible presence of the UFO detected by two separate aircraft in a highly trafficked airspace, the only thing that seems for sure is that the FAA looks like it has no idea of what this strange airborne mystery was either, explaining that it wasn't aware of any unusual aircraft or weather balloon experiments in the area on the day that uh, that could account for what the pilot saw. We don't have any comment beyond what you hear. <laughs> so uh, apparently, as the drive points out, the region which the sightings took place it is nestled in the midst of numerous military and air force facilities. It is an area known for being highly active with military aircraft and even possibly clandestine aircraft, which remain under a cloak of secrecy. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the, the that Albuquerque place um, knows where all of the all of the various uh, 
uh, balloons and, and such like that are located in that area at all times. Uh, they, they, they're the, the central ones on, on that. But um, they don't want to say what it was, but it was something sitting up there above these guys, and I'm, I'm thinking UFO. E.T. Okay. Okay, my first thought was um, when I because is this the one that looks black? No, well, they they don't really. They just said it was it was. Oh, okay. Shining, so this is a different story. Shi- no wonder I was confused. Shining, shining bright story. lights down at them, and it was up there, and. Yeah, it's a whole different story from what I was thinking of then. Greg. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind then. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that's cool. It, it, to me, it's cool. I mean, to me, it's. It, it it doesn't make me afraid. It doesn't make me go oh no way. No, I, I believe it. I mean, I believe it. I mean. Now, now let me let me ask a question. Uh, uh, let me let me ask you a question. Okay. Okay. Um, the other night, uh, I, I, uh, Christine said, "Hey, let, let's watch this movie." You know, she calls yeah. and, we, and we watch movies at the same time, so we can talk about them after. Yeah. Okay. So we watched this movie, and it was called uh, Other Kind, or something like that. Other, no, not Other Kind, something like that. What was it called? Arrival. A different, different kind. A different kind. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so it's about these guys, uh, and, well, these these two couples that are gonna they're gonna go uh, hiking and camping up in this snow area in uh, whatever mountains, some mountains. Anyway, it was like a you know a long hiking trip through the snow. Yeah, a twenty-seven mile trip that they were going to do in like two or three days. Anyway, so the first night up there, there at well one of the one the one the one girl left because she got pissed off at her boyfriend and she left. So there was only three of them. Uh, anyway, so they're up there <laughs> camping <laughs> on the first night, and these things come flying by like these. Well. You, they don't really show exactly what it is, but right, but, but right. it's obviously UFO or UFO related. Right. Okay. So this is the point that I want to talk about. I don't tell you about the rest of the story in case anybody wants to watch it. It was, it was kind of an interesting movie. I, I enjoyed it. Um, anyway. And then some other weird stuff happened later, and 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 that may have made you consider think twice about being up there camping in this area. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you should leave. Right. So anyway, so uh, Christine asked me. So so uh, at what point would you would you have gotten out, gotten the hell out of there? Right. And I said, well, I can't really say. I mean, I, I maybe probably this part with the tent poles it was a weird thing that happened. With this guy lost the tent poles and then they appeared somewhere else. Anyway, um, she said you wouldn't have left with, there during that that first time when when you. When you saw those those lights, those UFOs coming by, I said, "No, I I, I don't I don't want to meet those guys." So, you know, they they might have had some good information to pass along to me or something. And she's like, "Well, you're you're nuts. You those guys they could have been want to do bad stuff." And I said, "Maybe, yeah. I said, maybe 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 they would, but but I say to me, it's worth it's worth the risk to to, right, get, right. to, to get that you know universe knowledge of the universe or whatever there you know." Uh, just just because they're out there, don't mean that they're going to do bad stuff. That you know, they might, they might, but it's you know. If they were gonna, they probably would have lasered them to death at that point. <laughs> well, the first time. But maybe. You know. But but I mean, if you had the opportunity, the if, if you had uh, the opportunity to either run or meet some some uh, some extraterrestrial type guys, which one would you do? I, I'd be terrified, but I'd do it probably. I mean, I would be unknown. You know what I mean? Not, I would be hesitant, not terrified. I guess you know. I would be more curious than not. So I'd probably want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be all over it. I mean, yeah, let me know what you know. I, I want, I want, I want the secrets that you guys know for being out there and wherever you're from. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It would be cool. Yeah, and and I mean, if you saw that kind of stuff and you thought it was, you know, a bunch of humans trying to screw with you. Then it would be like, no thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm done here. I I mean, humans, (laughs) humans I'd want to avoid. Aliens I'd probably be okay with. (laughs) Right. I'd I'd definitely be okay with. (laughs) So, 
I did bookmark a few things. Okay. And this is one thing that it caught my eye. This is from six days ago. All right. Uh, which would be what? I don't know what day. I'm lost. I don't know what day. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, Today's 30, so, so six, guy, six days ago would have been 24, which would have been last okay, Saturday. All right, there you go. Yeah, today's the 30th. Okay. All right. Um, the flat earther blasts off in his homemade oh, rocket. Oh, yeah. To, re to reassure himself, the world is shaped like a frisbee. <laughs> He's tired of people saying, I chickened out and didn't build a rocket. So he, he, he wanted to prove oh, to everybody that he was being straight up. And uh, he actually did it. Yeah, he, he came crashing back down to Earth. He didn't die. He went uh, up pretty fucking far, though. Uh-huh. He, uh... Let's see how far did he go up there. Anyway, there you go. He, uh... He wanted to prove everybody wrong. Did, and did he, he did it. it? Did he Did he prove everybody wrong? I don't think... Well, I don't think he hasn't said anything. I haven't seen what he said about the Earth being shaped like a frisbee or not. <laughs> yeah, but, um... <laughs> Anyway, um, like a frisbee. Uh, oh, yeah, that happened. Oh, God, that's crazy. He, uh, they had to call the ambulance for him and everything. Yeah, we, he, he says, I'm tired of people saying I chickened out and didn't build a rocket. I'm tired of that stuff. I manned up and did it. This is another link here. Yeah, um, yeah he could have been. NBC News. This was March 24th, yep. He, he finally went up just like the self-taught rocket scientist always pledged he would. He came back down in one piece, too, a little danged up, and his steam-powered vessel a little cracked up. Still, mission accomplished for a guy, more daredevil than engineer, who drew more comparisons to the cartoon character Wiley E. Coyote from his critics than he did to iconic stuntman Evil Knievel. <laughs> Mad Mike Hughes, the rocket man, who believes the Earth is flat, propelled himself about 1,875 feet into the air on Saturday, for a hard landing in the Mojave Desert. He told the Associated Press that outside of an aching back, he's fine after the launch near Amboy, California. Relieved, he said, after being checked out by paramedics. I'm tired of people saying I chickened out and didn't build a rocket. I'm tired of that stuff. I manned up and I did it. So there you go. You can read the rest for yourself. Yeah, I gotta give him credit, you know. Hey, the dude's got balls. You know, I mean, come on. More balls you know. than brains, yeah. Yeah, apparently. Um, Frisbee. <laughs> he thinks it's shaped like a frisbee, like an upside down frisbee or whatever. I don't know what the fuck. Upside down, or maybe like it's one of them flat frisbees. I don't know. Like a pizza. It's a big old pizza. Earth is a pizza pie. <laughs> So the other thing I wanted to talk about, which, which was two weeks ago on Freakers, and I couldn't find, you know, I was gone one week, and then I was back, and I wasn't prepared to talk about it, so now I'm ready to talk about it. Okay. Okay, so they were going to, the, the city of Eau Claire was going to pass this, this new public good or, order. Right, right, ordinance. ordinance. Right. And it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's. It's utterly ridiculous, and it didn't get passed. It, it, it's, it's tabled for now, Good. okay? Because there was so much fucking uproar, which I I was pissed, okay? When I read this thing, I was pissed. I'm like, I want to go down to that meeting and just tell them straight up this is fascism, period. So anyway, um, they want to do the public good order, which is a fine of $295, um, one of the things, stand, loiter, or congregate on streets or sidewalks. Hinder or annoy persons passing on streets or sidewalks. Loiter in public or private buildings and structures. Uh, speak at a volume that would annoy anyone passing along street <laughs> slash sidewalk. Speak at a volume that would annoy any person in a dwelling. Okay? That's the first one. Second one, physical neighborhood disruption. Fine of $295. Allow accumula accumulation of bottles or cans on property for over 24 hours. 
keep chairs, tables, tubes in yard. Wait, wait, everybody has... Inner tubes. Doesn't everybody have tables in their yard? Well, yeah. And see, the college kids, if you live on Water Street in a college... See, this is aimed at the college, right? This is aimed at the college kids. But, because it, it's from the Student Senate of the University of Eau Claire. But they want to make it a city thing. And this just cannot happen, okay? Okay, and then the other one is, third one is, public intoxication, fine of $295. Enter into or remain in a public, including businesses that serve alcohol, place, while demonstrating sustainably under the influence. Established by bloodshot, glassy eyes, slurred speech, or odor, odor and or staggering. <laughs> That's what happens when people drink. And these are college kids. Hello? And it, not just college kids, but everybody in the fucking city. Yeah. Okay. So then, <clears throat> changes the bus slash shuttle service. Hang on a second. Shuttle services may not drop off 10 or more passengers along a single city block or the historic Randall Park neighborhood slash third ward neighborhood. Shuttle services may not pick up, drop off at locations where such vehicle could not legally park. So meaning on Water Street where all these, some of these college bars are, mm -hmm. like the party bus pulls up and just they can't park really because there's cars parked there. So they just stop and let the people out. Right? Yeah, yeah. It takes, what, five, two minutes or something. You know, not even. You know, so they're saying that can't be done anymore. But you'd think that people would be happy that they're on a party bus and not driving their own cars, right? you think. While they're bar hopping. Right. I mean, this, this when I read this, I, there was just way too much room for interpretation and, and perce perception. Oh, yeah, they could use it for anything. Oh, they... And it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. And so there was this city council media, and I know that there was a lot of people there. And so I'm like, I mean, the public good order, the first one, is so vague and so left up to interpretation by a cop that that's just a scary one. I mean... That's just a fucking scary one. The first one's the worst one. Sure. You know, and, okay, so around the college, there's a lot of rental homes. The college is, the, the students rent out, like, as a group of people, like five people or whatever, or four people were rent out, rent out on these homes, right? Mm-hmm. And they're not big. They're just, they're, they're college housing. You know what I mean? They're four, they're three bedrooms or four bedrooms, but they're not big homes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And whenever, like, there's homecoming, or when they move out, or when there's a parent's weekend, or there's some special weekend going on, where, like, the whole college campus is partying, the next day, I, I've driven through there the next day, like, the day after homecoming, and there's kids out there cleaning up the street, cleaning up the area, picking mm -hmm. up all the garbage and stuff. Right. So they do know, and they're aware of it. They take, they do a pretty good job, I think. Yeah. You know? Whoever fucking got decided to do all this crap is a total fucking tight line. Total fucking, uh, what do they call that? Uh, control freak? Control freak and, uh, well, like a party pooper. What yeah. do you call that? Uh, party pooper. Buzz kill. Yeah, Buzz, buzz Killington. Kill. There you go, They're Buzz. Total buzz fucking kill. <laughs> <laughs> they obviously. Do not get it, right? Yeah, so a, anyway, it's been tabled, quote unquote, tabled for now. Right. If they try to bring this up again, I'll be the first one to go down there and tell them straight up, this is fucking fascism. I won't say fucking, I'll just say this is fascism, straight up. This is not fucking, this is not the Third Reich. This is, you know, this is fascism, and we are not the Third fucking Reich. So, this is bullshit. <laughs> of course, I will not use that language. Right. I can behave when I want to. I oh. can speak properly and professionally when I want to. Sure, sure. But this is the Frickers Ball, so I don't have to right now. That's right. We're ready to play some music <laughs> anyway, so. All right. So I just, 
that, I just didn't want to get that one off my mind. No, that's good. That's good this to get that ridiculous. there. ridiculous. Screw those people. Who the hell is So I are? posted the link in the chat. You guys can all see it. But yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's like, are you freaking kidding me? Right. Oh, my God. You can't make this shit up, people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wish nope. you could. Right. Sometimes we wish we could, but we can't. So, they're they're so better yeah. at it in reality than we could be yeah, in fiction. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. I'm sorry, Greg, but the kicker about it is this is fucking Wisconsin. Like we lead the nation in like drunkenness. Come on, <laughs> and I mean, Come on, come on. <laughs> when you, I mean, come on. You're asking too much from the drunken state. One of the most drunken states in the fucking nation. Come on, this this won't fly here. No, we are we can't have this. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, well, at least it's tabled for now, and you don't have to fight it for a while. Yeah? Where'd you go? Okay, well, that's fine. We got music to play. <laughs> I don't know where you went. <laughs> All right, enjoy, folks. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, so we're going to go old school here. You know this one. Ah, yes, the lovely and talented Imelda May with her song, Wild Woman. Great stuff there. Uh, before that, a Cowboy Tech request, ACDC, and for those about to rock, we salute you. Uh, live live from uh, River Plate, River Plate, River Plate, I don't know, hard to tell. And we kicked it off there with uh, Lizzie Hale, Hailstorm, with the special guest, the flawless Dorothy, who <laughs> doing I just want to make love to you. Well, ladies, if you want to, I, I mean, who am I to say no? <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, Amelda May, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like her. No I like question. her too, but not in the same way that Grim does. <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. I mean, she is. But she anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> so, let's see what else I'm going to do. Let's see. Go on with the words. Blah, blah, blah. I got to sing like Grammy does when she's like looking up. She's like. <laughs> okay, um, one thing I ca that caught my eye that I did bookmark, and I wasn't necessarily going to talk about it, but it's not a big deal. I'm just talking about it on stickers tonight because I have it. Here it is. How to bring the ancient art of sage cleansing into your home. This is from March 6, 2018. Okay. It's just that, I mean, there's many articles out there, and this isn't the, the end-all, be-all article. I was saying, if you want to learn how to do this, uh, it's not even... Oh, Brewer, Brewers just scored. Oh, all right. I was wondering what that, what that was. What? Uh, what? I, okay, I gotta, I gotta no. keep talking. My son's like interrupting me. Anyway, it's like a baseball. That's like a baseball thing. The Brewers are playing right now, and they just and they, it was uh, six to five, and <laughs> they were uh, losing six to five, and uh, now they just that's a baseball scored. deal. It's baseball. Yes, right. baseball started the other day, yesterday, the day before. Okay. Anyway, um, sorry, no. How to bring the ancient art of sage cleansing into your home? The idea of clearing... Sorry about the interruption. Um, the idea of clearing negative energy may sound decidedly new age, but it's been around for millennia. Here's how you can use smudging in your spaces and for self-care. Um, it, it, it's just a good article. There's other articles out there that you can look up. You can do more research on this. This is just a good, maybe a beginning point, but I swear by Sage. I love Sage. Um, it's it will cleanse your surroundings. Um, this just gives you a little bit of the history, the psychology of it. Why do you want to use it? Um, it, it 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 is a purifier. 
okay? And it doesn't take anything to use it. All you have to do is be thinking good thoughts when you're um, burning it. And there are also things you can use, other things besides sage, but sage to me is like the best thing. Um, and, you know, Grimnir, Grimnir, see, Grimnir lives in New Mexico, so like the kind of really, like the really good white sage, the one that's in the picture of this article, it grows wild in his yard. Okay? This is the white sage. It's a good sage. I mean, there's all different kinds of sage. It's all good. But to me, I think the white sage is the best. Um, and it, because it's just, it's big. It's, it's like, the others, you have to let it dry out a little bit. You have to, like, cure it. Like, when it grows, it's green. So, like, when you, they bundle, that's why they, they show it bundled like it is, because when they pick it, they, they bundle it in a certain way so it can dry out. You know, it's like incense, like, it has to be dry. It, it's kind of like an incense, but it's sage, so it's way more powerful than incense, you know. Um, you have to be careful with it a little bit. You don't want to be messing with it if you're intoxicated. Um, you don't want to do a sage cleansing of your home if you're intoxicated. You want to have a clear mind and be thinking clear thoughts and be just walking around your house and waft the smoke up, with the, waft, the smoke waft up, you know. Um, it's worked for me. It has totally worked for me. Um, it, uh, I learned about it from when I spent my time uh, working and living in, on an Indian reservation. Um, I've gone to sweat lodge ceremonies and everything. Yeah, I was, I was trying to tell you that my, mine is not white, it's green. But it will be white when it dries out. All right. When you when it's green, it's not in the burnable form. Like you can burn it, but you know how it is when you try to burn green wood. Sure. You know that's why you have to like make cure it. You have to pick it and let it cure. Let it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you do with weed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you gotta pick it, let it cure. You can't just pick it, smoke it. You can, but it's going to be really hard to solve it. Yeah. If it's so moist. You know what I mean? Right. So you have to let... That's why I wanted... You can send me green sage. I don't care. I'll cure it and I'll let it dry out. You know what I mean? But, I mean, you you could actually start your own little business. There. <laughs> you know? I suppose. Bundling sage, sage and then selling it to, like, places like Truckers Union here in Elfair or whatever. You know? To what truckers? Truckers Union. It's it's like the kind of like the head shop. Oh. And they're trucking. But I've seen it for sale everywhere. I mean, if I go to a powwow, I know that if I go to a Native American powwow, that there's going to be five vendors there. They're going to have really good, awesome Southwestern sage. You know. Mm, okay. Southwest U.S. sage. But I mean, those the bundles, the sticks sell from anywhere from three dollars on up to twenty. Okay. So one one stick of it, you know, like, and when I say a stick, I mean a bundle of it. You know what I mean? Right. But there's actually people that like a lot of it comes. There's like a place in Arizona I know that it comes from. Oh yeah, sure. Up in the yeah, mountains. Yeah, Arizona, Arizona, New Mexico. That's where. It's it's good sage. I mean, it's it's not that all sage is good, but it's just like that white sage. It's just special. You know what I mean? No, no, no. It's when like I, top when, quality. When I was, it's like top quality sage, right? Well, when I was a kid, we had this canyon there back back behind the house, and there were, and there was these bushes. They were called sagebrush. Familiar, yeah. Are you, are you familiar with that? Yes. That's what it is. It's sagebrush. Okay. Well, my, what I have grown is not. It's not bushes. No, no. But those were but those. I, those were butch bushes, and they're called sagebrush. Right. Those are different. No, that is, okay. I take that back. That is that is okay. different. A sagebrush is not the same thing we're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I could never get away with with with, with lying if I'd been in the canyon because they could always smell it on me. <laughs> a sagebrush bush is, is what turns into tumbleweed. I don't think so. Yeah, any any bush really can turn into a tumbleweed. 
as long as it dries out and, you know, lets go of the rooting, it's a tumbleweed. Oh, well, I, I, no, this is... To me, I'm not from the Southwest, so I'm not... I'm yeah, that, that's not... Right. That's I don't know no knowledge of tumbleweed. Yeah, well, I've those seen are, them, those but are I have like no knowledge of them. Pr- prickly bushes, these little round prickly bushes, they turn into tumbleweeds. Oh, okay, yep. I've seen them before, but I just didn't know exactly what you plant. Yeah. But I've seen weird t- non-tumbleweed plants turn into tumbleweed. Okay. It's possible. All right. Safe. All right. So there's this so, story yeah. here on a different on a different topic. Of course, maybe this guy could be helped out by Sage. I I don't know. At first, I thought they were talking about Hans, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not. <laughs> Because the guy's from the U.K. A man in the U.K. has contracted the first case of untreatable super gonorrhea (laughs) after an encounter with a woman in Southeast Asia. Untreatable super gonorrhea. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The fuck, man? All right. Uh, Anyway, so he he got this antibiotic-resistant gonorrhea uh, he got it after a, ca- a counter with a woman in Southeast Asia, uh, according to the Public Health England. All of the regular treatments have failed to get rid of the disease. He has a regular female partner. Well, he had a regular female partner in the UK. <laughs> but she did not catch it. So it's transmissible, uh, apparently, but um, maybe, I don't know, it doesn't say whether or not they... Uh, had sex after he got back from screwing this Southeast Asian hooker. Uh, uh, <laughs> so he got the disease, uh, b- believed to be the first case in the world to resist antibiotic treatment after sexual contact. Uh, this man's case is described in a report published in uh, Thursday, published Thursday by Public Health England. He had visited a health clinic for a treatment earlier this year, but the antibiotics azithromycin and severalaxosone both both failed to get rid of the disease. Uh, PHE said he had a regular female partner, regular, not an irregular one, apparently, (laughs) um, who didn't get it. Um, Regular means the the same person. No, no, I I know what it means. Last wor- last year, the WHO warned that cases of antibiotic-resistant uh, gonorrhea were on the rise. Well, how could they be on the rise if he's the first one to get it? Uh, anyway, as a result of unsafe oral uh, oral sex and a decline in condom use. So uh, maybe his new girlfriend didn't give him any blowjobs. I, I don't know. Um Anyway, I thought it was uh, interesting. Or did, are they making this shit up at this point in time? Um, yeah. Yep, they are. They're making it up. Yeah, that's, that's kind of my my. my... Yeah, they're making it up. They just want us to be. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, we can't have. You know, you might. You might have. Uh, you might have the. Right. Soup, you might have the super gonorrhea. One more thing to be in fear of. Be afraid. Well, speaking of that. <laughs> not, not that this really makes me fear because I don't do this but most of y'all okay. do at some point or another most of you do and I used to regularly but I quit okay study warns eating out can increase phthalates and lead to disease um, it says eating at restaurants and fast food chains may be convenient, but a new study suggests it comes with risks, including increased exposure to potentially harmful chemical called bathalates. Researchers yes. looked into data collected between 20, uh, 2005 and 2014 as part of the National Health and Education Health and Nutrition Exam Survey and discovered that subjects who had recently eaten food from a fast food restaurant had Levels of phthalates 35% higher than those who ate at home. In the, so. Yeah, oh, absolutely. In total, scientists examined the, re, examined the results of 10,253 participants. 61% of the group 
uh, replied to the survey they had eaten out within the previous 24 hours, and the majority of these respondents showed an increase in the level of phthalate, I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, uh, biomarkers yeah. uh, when their urine was tested. The results show this. because of the cleaning out chemicals. They, I believe it's from the cleaning because they, they have to keep everything supposed to be clean. Most right? of them are nasty. So they use chemicals to clean the countertops, to clean the, the, the prep areas, and to clean everything. And that chemicals is going to get in your food. Those chemicals. Yeah. Anyway, so if you're going to these places to eat, I, I don't know what these these phthalates are, but apparently they make you sick. And um, buy fresh food and make it at home. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, the thing with fresh food, you know, it's like we're we're so fucked right now. Like I, I seriously think we're fucked as far as the food goes. Um, I've been paying attention to. Uh, the way the meat is, you know, chickens are raised and beef and, you know, cattle and... All right, well, anyway... Here, here, here. It's, it's not pretty, people. I mean, it's inhumane, all right? But what, the way it, that they raise chickens, for one... Let's just use chickens as an example. Okay, well, they, they, the, 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 root, the, root of the, the root thing of the story here says, when exposed to the human body, it can disrupt hormones and cause a number of health issues. Right. It's linked to asthma, type 2 diabetes, breast cancer, and fertility issues. Yep. So, I mean, we're being, we're being slowly poisoned to death. Be it the food, the air, the water, you name it. The vaccines that they want us to get. I mean, we're being poisoned. Yeah. That's that's the truth, and the best thing you can do is to you know, do what you can to combat that. You know, get back at it, and so it doesn't kill you. And besides uh, that, <laughs> besides that nasty stuff, <laughs> there's this nasty stuff. Some of which. Uh, I am guilty of not not the okay. first one they bring up here on the Guardian. <laughs> okay. But uh, it says why you should throw the rubber duck out with the bathwater. It says a new study shows that the bath time toys are teeming with bacteria. I saw this. And and if they don't poison you, your washing machine, chop or chopping board might. Yep. So, uh, yeah, they, they point out that these, these little rubber ducks are nasty things to put in the bathtub with your kid. Yeah. They also talk about sponges. And and I and I do use <sighs> sponges for, for cleaning dishes and such. Oh, yeah. Um, but apparently they're pretty nasty and hold they lots are. of They are. They're fucking nasty very things. nasty. And then there's also your cutting boards. Yeah. Now, I wash my cutting board regularly all the time. I Anytime. Do so. Any, any okay. time before I put food on it, I, I, I wash it. Yep, yep. But apparently, you know, they're, they still... <laughs> they harbor bacteria because yeah, if you use the plastic good. or the wood kind, as soon as there's like a cut in it, like bacteria can get in there. And even though you clean it, you need to clean it with like bleach or something. That's good. Like it actually kill the bacteria that's in those, you know... I just wash mine with fucking regular just salt. Right. You know, I'm not going to be, like, uh, all paranoid. See, there's a fine line between intelligence and paranoia, and you have to decipher what, 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 where are you going to draw the line here. You know what I mean? Okay, well, then, then it's... My talk kids call me a germaphobe because they say I wash my hands too much, and I, I like... I'm conscious about what I touch and everything, especially if I'm going to be, like, eating food after I touch something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's like, I need to wash my hands. Like, sometimes I'll be at the restaurant, I'll order my food, get in the menu sticky. I'll be like, as soon as I order my food, I get up from the table, I walk in the restroom, I wash my fucking hands. All right, well, then it also talks about washing machines. Washing machines. Washing. And you would think, right. hey, I put my, my soap in there and everything should be clean and good. Uh, but but apparently, no. um, if you no. don't occasionally at least uh, use the, the super hot 
uh, right. le- uh, cycle. With some vinegar. Yeah, um, then then um, it, they they contain a lot of nasty stuff too. They do. Um, it also talks about ice trays and Ooh, computer, yeah, ice trays, computer keyboards, which are known nasty oh, God. Uh, things. Of course, it's yeah. just my germs on mine, so I, I don't know. Right, that, you know, but if like when I'm <laughs> sick at work or whatever, like I always have hand sanitizer at my, at my desk, but. Yeah. If I'm sick and everything, like when I come back, like or or like if I'm sick and when I come back after I am less sick, I clean my whole fucking desk. I, yeah. I wipe off the surfaces, I wipe off the keyboard, I wipe off the mouse, I wipe off everything. You know what I mean? You have to, so you don't get sick again. <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. So, anyway, any, any, pretty much anything in your house is gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah, in the food you eat, in the air you breathe, in the water you drink. So, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Anything. Have a fucking good Friday. Some, something's gonna, something's gonna kill your ass. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Pour up. So is that good to it, it consume? No, it's not good for. No, you. no, but it's good for cleaning. It's it's really good for cleaning. It is good. Vinegar to me is the best thing for cleaning. Vin- vinegar's yeah. great. Vinegar's great for cleaning. Um, it, yeah. I'm gonna give you guys a hit, a tip. Ammonia mixed with some water is the best window cleaner ever. Sure. Glass cleaner. Yes. Yeah. It, and vinegar works pretty good on glass, too. But fucking... Of course, I never clean the windows. Yeah, I, 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 I know. It's like a one a year, once a year. It's that. <laughs> you know, it's like, really? Okay. okay once, once in ten years. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> we're going to play our music set here. Um, okay. and, and we're going to start off with a song that Hans originally requested and then he never got played and I re-requested it without realizing, of course. And then we're going to play a song that I requested and never got played and then Hans re-requested. <laughs> a little flippity, so, okay. a little flippity really? flop. Really? Drano? Drano? The Drano's terrible. It's bad. Yeah. Baking soda, baking soda and vinegar will... Or baking soda and water will clear up your fucking boiling water will clear your drain. Absolutely. Don't use Drano, dude. Don't not use Drano. Yeah, that that leaks your that leaks your pipes. Drano Drano will eat your pipes. What? Drano will eat your pipes. Yes, it will. It's the worst product, one of the worst products out there. It's so toxic. I would not use that in your home. Do not use that. That's just my two two cents worth box. Take it. Do what you want with it. But look up fucking. How to clung clog a drain without using Drano. There's there's other solutions. You can plunge Plenty. the fucker. Have you plunged it yet? A coat hanger. That's what I use to unclog my drain. My bathtub drain, I use a freaking stretched out metal coat hanger. There you go. I don't use Drano. I refuse to use it. It goes right into the water fucking system. And it and it eat your pipes. Sure. Okay. Anyway, so here we go. This is a, a Hans right. request that I re-requested, and the next is a me request that Hans re-requested. <laughs> All right. Funny. So a double request. Well, it's a it, it's a it's a flip flop. Yeah, the first. All yeah. Right. All right. Cool. All right. Here you go, Rammstein. We are all living in America. America. Uh, yeah, Dave Edmonds. Gotta love Dave Edmonds. That's uh, I hear you knocking. Uh, before that, we had Accept with Teutonic Terror, and we kicked it off with Rammstein doing America. Yep, good stuff there, boy. <laughs> if you like good music, that is. If you don't, I really can't help you out, because uh, I only like the good music. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, in case you don't know, Grim is the DJ, dude, you know, and he makes the final call. He does. That's all there is to it. And he has a musical stop, and he'll admit that. I mean. I will admit that. We play shit that we want to hear. Not, we're not just gonna, we don't take random, re- we do take random requests, but they have to be 
ones that we both want to listen to. And Grimner and Oh, we got a pretty good crowd, though. We got. I mean, they're they're pretty good at making yeah. requests. So, you know, I'll, I'll I'll occasionally get get one in there that I'll just have occasionally. to occasionally. Yeah, but, but uh, he, if he does occasionally play one of your random requests, like wait out there, if he don't like it and it sucks, he'll totally fucking stop it. Just fucking one of that song. <laughs> just putting, it, putting that out there it's happened to me even so hey, I've, um, I've, 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 I've just learned to request the right songs for this show you know I've, go, I've gone my own song so <laughs> <laughs> right he, he has he really has that's true oh god <laughs> alright let, let's, 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 let's cover this before we go out of here because I, I think it's important that People do delete their Facebook. We talked about the social media at the top of the show. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this right here, right now. Uh, you okay. know, Facebook is is a terrible, terrible thing, terrible oh, place. Fuck. I, I'm ready to leave. I'm All ready right. Leave. Well, here's you know, for those of you that are ready to get out of Facebook, and I forget who posted this link in the chat earlier today, but somebody did, and I think it's a great idea. You should follow along this here from the Daily Dot. How to Poison your data before you delete Facebook. A developer has created a script that updates your Facebook posts with gobbledygook. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm not going to share all with you. Uh, I'll let you read it for yourself. But but I think it's important that you should get out of Facebook. But before you do, make sure you ruin all all uh, opportunity they have. Of, of of using that data against you in the future because you know that they want to. And 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 getting out of Facebook is a bonus for everybody. I gotta leave. I mean, I, I, it's hard because like we talked about, that's how I in some, with some people that don't live close by or whatever, that's how like, I keep up on what they're doing and stuff. Not that I like talk to them every day or anything, but which, but I'm I'm sick of it. I really am. I get sick of Facebook. I I am. I'm kind of sick of it. It's like, you know what? Like I deleted Facebook Messenger off my phone. Yeah. And it was really weird because as soon as I did that, like the next day, I had two like messages, right, that yeah. were pending or whatever. And right. so since I deleted it, I couldn't view them. Right. It right. would be a reinstall it. Well, then I'm like, oh, that's okay. I'll, it'll just be on my home computer, right? Sure. It'll be on the Facebook on my home computer. The messages from Messenger, right? Right. Get home? No, nope, no messages. I'm like those fucking bastards. They wanted me to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe someone did actually message me, but if they did on my face on the, my Facebook on my phone, mm -hmm. why wouldn't I be able to see it on my Facebook on my computer? Yeah, I don't know. Right. It's weird because maybe the settings are different or something. I don't know, but don't know. like, it's I don't want messenger on my phone anymore. That, that no, yeah. it's good. good. I mean, and I'm ready to get rid of Facebook too because it's just weird. It's, it is. It's a data mining tool. I agree with Rome's. You know, he's not here or whatever, but he, I've seen him in the chat. Oh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, a data it's mining a, tool. It's NSA. It's CIA. Yeah, yeah, it's a data mining tool. And that Zuckerberg or whatever, you know, he was probably a patsy. And they paid him a lot of money because he came up with the idea, you know. And then they busted him with lying, saying, oh, you'll never sell the information. You'll never, yeah, it's like, you know what? He's a fucking liar. <laughs> because that's exactly what they've done. And they've done it since day one. Yeah. This is not a new thing. This is not some new revelation that, oh, my God, they're doing this. No, they've been doing it for a long time. For right. For many fucking years. You right. know, you fool yourself and think this is something new. Sure. No, this has been the whole purpose of Facebook from the get-go. Sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, cops use it as a tool. Those Absolutely. fucking kids that were just, had that shooting plan for Memorial here, they fucking got busted using Facebook Messenger. All right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even your GPS. I mean, they're listening. Last week, didn't we talk about this thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, they're listening through your cell phone, through your smart TV. They're listening to your conversations, even when you're fucking sleeping. Right. Even when you're fucking sleeping. Exactly. They're listening. We talked about this last week. That's you right. guys missed that? Listen to last week's show. Yep. The podcast. Because we do podcasts on every show. Yeah, we do. 
I mean, if you guys miss something, you can go back and you can fast forward and blah, blah, blah. You don't want to hear certain parts. Now, we exactly. don't play the music, but it's all the talking portion. So it's, it's a shorter show than listening to the whole show, the live show. All right. All right. Well, let me let me, I mean, let me, let me, let me this. Let, let me, let me, just last week, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, let me cover this real quick, because we're, we're almost out of time okay, here. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. Um, yeah, you're familiar with the uh, application called Cody? No, I'm not. Okay. Well, a lot of people use Cody. Cody's a great little uh, I've heard of media center software. It works like uh, how Windows Media Center should have worked, but never did. Um, anyway, apparently Google has now added Cody to the autocomplete piracy filter. There is nothing, there is nothing in Cody that deals, that has any piracy to it. Now you can certainly use, uh, do pirated things with it, but that's not part of Cody itself. So anyway, Google has banned the term Cody from the autocomplete feature of its search engine. This means the popular software and related suggestions will not appear unless the user types out the full term. Google has previously taken measures against pirate-related terms and confirms that Cody is targeted because it's closely associated with copyright infringement. <laughs> and to Google, I say, fuck you. Cody people are smarter than you, and they will find ways around your bullshit. Um, so, yeah, that's on torrentfreak.com. There's a lot more information in that article. But uh, anybody that uh, – just trying to kill things that uh, – just just nasty what they do. Anyway, we got to play the yeah. last the last bit of music here. Um, wish I had more yeah, time to can't. talk, but I don't. Yep, it went fast tonight. I mean, <laughs> it's weird how that works, but it does. It's I know, I know. Out. Like, ooh, look at what. And this is uh, – Moose Girl's future husband. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Uh, no, I'm never getting married again. No, no, never have. No. Black Betty, yeah. Yeah. Black Betty, yeah. Stoner Train, Black Betty. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I love that song. I love that version. Uh, anyway, before that, uh, just uh, one song there. Joe Bonamassa doing Bex Bolaro rice pudding. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely stuff. Uh, and, and, and Poxified, I don't know if I got to any of your requests or not, but don't worry. I'll get to some next time. Uh, I, I, you know, just, just uh, luck of the draw is what I say. Random selection. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, thank you all for tuning in. Moose, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. All right. So, I mean, uh, we, we do that. That's how it works. When you request a song, it goes into, like, a playlist. Yeah, no, I, you That's know. That's how it works. I mean. I, I try to get to them, but, you know, there's yeah. only there's only so much time, and we, we talk too much, and. Right. Don't, don't yeah. play enough music. We just check a time or whatever. And it, that it too. Like, no planning, like, like we're not gonna be like, oh, we talk for fifteen minutes and we take a break. No, no. I mean, we're and, not and, like I that. Mean, like, we're, and, oh and my and god, I, we have to do a commercial, so we have to stop right now. And and, and as okay. you see, as you see, we're already running over over a couple minutes. So, <laughs> uh, you know, we, I, I never plan out the end very well. I try to get right. it, but but what I do, and and uh, you you may have noticed this is. I get the music to run right up to the last minute, and then I forget that. Oh yeah, we got to say stuff to close the show out. <laughs> yeah. I know you're not mad. Oh. I know you're not mad. Uh, yeah, just, we uh, know that. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Tomorrow you got the uh, yep. Dark Table at noon with uh, Grammy and Flash, and I'll be on Sunday for your uh, egg searching music blues and trivia. Um, <laughs> Yes. And Hal will be on in the afternoon with uh, his show, Behind the Woodshed. Uh, I assume Gary L. and Gigi's Boo will be on, but I had no guarantee there uh, on those two for this weekend. And we'll be back again next Friday night with another edition of the Freakers Ball. Hey, it's not oh, okay. What? It's not my, it's not my sensor, dude. I am not the fucking DJ. Nope. I, it's me. <laughs> yeah, so, just want to clarify that. Yeah, that's Peace. all. Peace.